Hello, and welcome to the Social Psychic Radio Show, featuring Jason Zook. In uncertain times, we must change our focus and priorities. This show will highlight social justice issues with the goal of expanding minds and increasing unity, love, and mutual respect for ourselves and our planet. We support the Black Lives Matter movement. Our show aspires to promote social spirituality, which simply means that by coming together, we can solve any of our problems, including the goal of bringing an end to all forms of hate, discrimination, bias, or oppression. We must protect our environment, reform our criminal justice system, and protect every citizen from police brutality. When we come together, it becomes possible to bridge the gaps that plague our society and divide us from within. We the people means everyone. Hello and welcome to the Social Psychic Radio Show. This is Jason Zook. It's a great pleasure I have the opportunity of welcoming special guest and friend, Rebecca Hildoggle Reigns, podcaster, manifester, real estate agent, broker, and many other titles and roles. Rebecca is originally from San Francisco. She graduated from Arizona State University with a bachelor's degree with a major in Spanish. After graduation, she began to work directly for local builders, selling residential new construction. In 1998, Rebecca earned her broker's license and became a designated broker for Sequoia Homes for two years before she joined Trend Homes of Arizona as a sales associate. Her career with Trend Homes lasted from 2001 to 2007 during which she was promoted to a general sales management position in 2005. During that same year, Rebecca began teaching contract law classes for new home sales at the Arizona School of Real Estate and Business. Her real estate made a 360 degree change in late 2007 when Rebecca returned to her roots to the foreclosure market by building the Integrity All-Star Team, which has had a focus of helping families avoid going through foreclosure when possible and assisting more than 400 families successfully complete short sales between 2008 and 2013. Integrity All Stars represents Bellagio Homes to sell their new homes under construction and also other clients with all aspects of residential real estate, both new home purchases and listing of resale homes. Rebecca has been featured in Channel 3 News, HGTV's House Hunters, and she's won countless awards during her distinguished career in the Arizona real estate market. Most notably, Rebecca has been named the number one Latina agent in Arizona by NAREP, as well as number one BREA agent in the Southeast Valley. She's considered an expert in her industry and truly loves helping families with the biggest investment of their lives. Rebecca has earned top rankings in the United States for highest production for a Latina eight years running, 2012 to 2019. In 2018, she was number 17 out of all Latino realtors in the United States and the number one Latina in Arizona. In 2016, Rebecca's life took a sudden turn when her father was diagnosed with a very rare condition known as CJD, which affects one in two million people. Rebecca has described CJD as a form of Matt Cow's disease, which eats the brain. During a two month period at the end of 2016, Rebecca experienced five deaths, spoke at four funerals, planned three funerals and gave two eulogies. She's described this time of her life as experiencing a tsunami of grief. Fortunately, Rebecca turned her grief into gratitude and this paradigm shift following her grief became the basis of her podcast, Grateful Heart TV. Grateful Heart TV is the motivational Arizona real estate business show. Rebecca seeks to inspire her audience to believe in themselves and to dare them to dream about infinite possibilities. She encourages her listeners to create the most abundant reality as to their thoughts, since all thoughts are powerful. Rebecca has raised her vibrations and turned her personal grief into gratitude. I'm so excited to have Rebecca on the show, and it's a great pleasure that I welcome her to the show at this time. Welcome to the show, Rebecca. Oh, thank you, Jason. I'm so happy to be here with you. And I've never heard anybody actually read my whole bio. I feel like I need to cut that thing down in half. <laughs> I, I wanted to give a complete picture of you because I think it represents exactly everything that you offer. I mean, you're a very multifaceted individual that's been through a lot of things. Mm. But what I love about your message and your story is that you turned the positive from something that was negative, the grief turned into gratitude. And that's a beautiful <laughs> example, right? That we should all strive for and seek. 
And that's why I, I, I'm so glad to have you on the show and, and welcome mm. today. Oh, I just got confirmation chills all over the place. And you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. So I am totally honored to share the message. The, the thing about me is I'm all about everybody I come across. I'm trying to motivate to have a better life, you know, and, and so many people we encounter, Jason, and you're in the same thing. You're a lawyer, you know, people come and find us for our services. And then we normally become their counselors for everything. Yeah. And it just, it's a natural progression. And, and so when I was going through everything that I went through, and I'd love to go into more detail about the specifics uh, for all of that, when I was kind of coming out of it, I had so much beautiful help. I had a girlfriend in Austin, and I think I shared a little bit with you about this. Basically, when my dad passed, that was on Halloween of 2016, the following day, my I, and I'd been with him through a lot of the medical stuff and it was very out of the blue, you know, none of us knew he was even sick up until right before he passed. And we just thought he was just being grumpy. You know, my daughter went off to Hawaii for school and I was like, gosh, why is he being such a jerk, you know, at the party? And, and he was troubling. He was having a hard time finding his words because CJD was already basically eating his brain and we had no idea. Wow. Uh, the following day after his, I was with him when he passed the following day, my husband's uncle passed alone, unexpected whom he was named after the day after that, my teeth that my stepmom's mom who lived with my dad and my stepmom passed. And I had to come rushing to her house to help deal with calling for them to pick her up and watching my brother carry her down the hallway. Cause they couldn't get the gurney down the hall. The amount of emotions, it was like a tsunami of grief, as you mentioned. And then shortly thereafter, my, one of our agents had cancer and he had a five-year-old daughter that uh, he was taking care of with Down syndrome. Not even two months later, he passed in the house with her in the house for days. And I had the wonderful pleasure of cleaning that house out and getting it sold for him. Meantime, my grandpa, well, my dad's dad, who also lived with him, imagine this, my stepmom lost all three of her roommates in the period of two months. So for me, it was tragic, but it wasn't like it was for her. So my abuelo passed out in hospice when my dad was passing. He had to end up in the hospital. I saw him at my tita's funeral and I pointed at him and I could just feel him. And I knew he just wanted to be gone. And I'm like, abuelo, we can't take another one. You are not allowed to go <laughs> Too anywhere. Many. Too many. Too many. And so no joke, less than two months later, I see him at my cousin's funeral or funeral wedding, and he's out on the dance floor, catching the garter bell, eating cake, happy as can be. <laughs> and he died two days later. And it was just like, it was a beautiful, I think going away for him. I, I could feel he was leaving. I knew he wanted to go. He wanted to go. And it was like his last hurrah. And, and those, those five deaths, changed me, but they changed me honestly for the better. Mm -hmm. they, they really did because a lot of the accolades that you read off in the beginning of the show, I've always been successful in real estate. I, it's in my blood. I'm a talker. I'm a motivator. If you, if, if it's a challenge to, you know, get the sale, right. But truly since my dad's passing, I have achieved certain numbers that I never thought were possible. I love and that. What's, what's interesting, Jason, is since my dad's passing, I started meditating. I started praying. If, if I, I had my way, I just sit in my office here at home and with the lights off doing my meditation with my crystals and crystals? I wouldn't even work at all. <laughs> exactly. Like I have them right here and I wouldn't even work at all if I could avoid it. But it's just like all of a sudden my business exploded. And what I realized is I moved into my heart center. I was up in my head an awful lot all those years in my early years in my career. And that wake up call I had in 2016 made me realize that life was so much more than just business. But my business has blossomed since my attitude has changed. That's like the law of attraction, manifestation, that kind of stuff. I think positive. And you and, you, you and I echo the same ideas. Yeah. Stay positive. One of your speeches you gave uh, the Manifest Destiny speech I, I reviewed for this show was 
where you said that you've made some changes in your life. And one of them is that you, you look at staying positive and that's like, I resonate with that. I believe heavily in positive thinking and I believe it can really make a difference in terms of how we approach the world. And, and, and I think you said 98% of the things we do or 90% of things are yeah. what we react to. Right. I believe in that. That resonates with me very strongly. Well, think about it. So when you're done meditating, Ooh, I got another confirmation chill. Um, <laughs> when, when you're sitting there meditating, right. And you're kind of centering yourself and tapping in, you're not nearly as reactive throughout your day. You're right, right about that. I, I, I could give you an example with that. I yeah, was telling you how my AC, my AC caught on fire a few weeks ago and it's kind of been disruptive in my life. It hasn't completely destroyed my life, but it's made it where I just get inconvenienced every day. Right. But and you saw that when we were trying to set up for the show, because I blew out a short and part of my, <laughs> in, my, in my living room, I had to switch cords and do all that before we started. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'll tell you this. Every single thing that I do, even though I get short term, like frustrated, flustered, I'll ground myself. I'll be like, yeah. hey, look, I'm alive. Hey, look, nothing burned down. Whatever it is, I always find the positive. Yeah. And having that, I think you have demonstrated that in your life yeah. since 2016 and before 2016. I will be writing that book. We talked about, there's no doubt. And I I picture it, I can envision it now. And, you know, and that's really, truly the thing that I think I've discovered on this journey is you mentioned law of attraction and manifestation. And I, you heard my speech about how to do that. And it wasn't like I was looking to gain more money, but I just want a better life and happy family and happy children and, and, you know, just all of the above. And it all just gets magnetized to me, right? Because I'm (laughs) admitting this frequency that others feel they don't really, maybe they don't realize it, but it's that je ne sais quoi, right? They just turn the room and you're right. Yeah. It's the je ne sais quoi. And, but if you're coming to it in the mindset that you're trying to achieve more money, Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the way, right? But when you find that money, abundance. It's the beautiful life. It's, I actually, my, C, my CEO said this to me just recently in real estate. And, and for the po- people who are listening, I know real estate's been crazy this last year because of COVID across the entire country. This was a day where I, I was having a tough day. A few months ago, I call my CEO and I'm like, I can't take this anymore. I want to I want to go home. You know, I'm done because we're, we're, we're writing offers left and right. These crazy bidding wars and people like emotionally, because I'm so empathic, like I do feel it and take on more than I should. And he's like, Rebecca. And it, it, again, he resonates with me. That's why I'm here. And he goes, what's your perfect day? Just keep focusing on what you want for your perfect day. And so that's where you manifest, right? you have to decide and get clear about what it is. And that was just a great reminder to me that number one, you got to get clear about what you want. You need to feel what it's going to feel like, envision it, experience it in your brain, meditate on it because your brain, your thought is so powerful that you create it just by thinking of it. Right. But so many people don't believe that that's possible. Lots of things. I have people here in Tampa that introduced that idea. And then just from doing our shows, I'm sure you've learned that as well. All the concepts of this, the metaphysical concepts, and just in general, the reality is our thoughts are things. Why would we deny that our thoughts are things when everything we do right. has something to do with our thoughts, right? Oh, for sure. And those <laughs> of us who tap in, we can like literally feel other people thinking about us, right? Exactly. And, and how they and how they're looking at things. You could and sense how they're energy. completely. And and so when when you take time, and I think that's the other part, you know, I, I needed to heal. So I go, I think I started sharing this earlier. I went to Austin. I had a trip planned to go see a girlfriend that I grew up with and she's super woo woo and has all kinds of healing friends. And she's amazing. And I love her. And out of the blue, right before my dad passed, she messaged me. I agreed to come and do a trip. It ended up being six days after my dad died, this trip. And I I had no idea at the time about numerology or synchronicity or angel signs. So everywhere I'm looking, there's 11, 11, 11, 111, 555, everywhere. So my flight, I think I arrived at 555 on 11, 5, you know, crazy stuff like that. And I get there and she has me lined up with every healing modality imaginable (laughs) and things I've never even heard of, like quantum stuff. Like, like, what is that? You know, and and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And I literally came home. She had me even get a tantric massage, like you name it. I experienced it. And I came home and I was just like, 
I should be really a lot more upset. But you weren't. Like she literally in two weeks after my dad and all those people passed, I was okay. Not only was I okay, I was like better than okay. It was the (laughs) weirdest thing. And I think that's what got me hooked into learning about the different modalities of healing. You know, a lot of my show, I try to incorporate and introduce topics that maybe the regular person hasn't heard of or thought of, or even knew existed because we can heal the trauma that we all carry around with us. Mm. Our frequencies get raised and we become that much more attractive, not attractive. We're magnetized. magnetized. We're magnetized. We're magnetized. I see that all the time. I, I first started experiencing that in 2006 when I was up in Mississippi doing Hurricane Katrina work. I helped homeowners sue the insurance companies on denied insurance. That's what I do for a living. But I was up there and I started learning that magnetization thing, law of attraction thing without understanding what it meant. Right. I just noticed that when I was on a, a good vibe, a good wave, all these positive things would happen at the same time. And I was in positive thinking. I was like, how does that work? And then I would develop something negative and all that would go fall off. Right. So it took years years to practice it and understand it. And I always give the analogy. Let's say that tomorrow morning you wake up and you go to Dunkin' Donuts to pick up a coffee for yourself. And you're really excited because you have a big interview for work or a big interview in general, big day ahead, like for you with real estate or for me with myself. And let's say you go through the drive-thru, you order your coffee and you have your favorite shirt on and you spill coffee on your favorite shirt. You could do one of two things and tell me if you can understand this. I always use this as the example. You could take that moment and say, you know what? Thank God. I have this shirt and I had this stain, but it's not a big deal because my day is going to be amazing no matter what. Mm-hmm. And from that point, you can either try to change out your shirts, whatever. But the, it's, it's concept, how you conceptualize it, right? It's completely upstairs. We create our realities. There's no denying it. There's no, I mean, like I have so many friends that I can think of that they sell themselves short. They have a lot of self-doubt, insecurities, And as much as I try to encourage them to work on healing, maybe they're not quite there yet. Maybe they're just not figuring it out. And as a result, like you could just see the storm cloud over their head. You know what I'm talking about? You can sense the energy. Yes. And everything happens bad to them because they attract it because that's what they're expecting. Those are the glasses that they're looking at life with. And those are, they, they don't realize how powerful they are. They don't because they create the reality. Okay. You know what? I spill a coffee. It hurts. I might say an F-bomb or something, have to run home and change. I don't know, but my day's still going to be good. Exactly. And if you do the right attitude, I find if you can snip it in the butt, as soon as it happens with that yeah. first stain on the shirt and smile and turn it upside, you know, turn it into a positive moment, the rest of your day will flow back into the positive trend. If you don't, then you're having one of those days that everyone describes as that crappy day from hell. <laughs> oh, I'm just having the worst day ever. Well, exactly. Like the exactly. Day just got worse because you just declared to the universe, I'm having the worst day ever. I mean, it's all from frame of reference, right? I mean, you're, oh, you're, you're 2016 and what you went through, very few people could understand that unless they experience it themselves. However, all of us are going to experience grief at any point of our life, depending on who passes and when that happens or whatever. And The way I look at grief and I love your mindset. And I love the fact that you went to Austin six days after your father passed, because I know your father passing was such a monumental thing Mm -hmm. based on your, your connection with him and the energy there. I just know how strong it was, but I know you did the right thing for yourself. That's why when you came back after you did all those healing modalities, Mm -hmm. you came back with a different perspective and you were able to turn that and into the grateful heart TV that you, I would just say you've done that in, 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 as a homage yeah. to your dad and to yourself, <laughs> infinite potential of all of us at the same time. I love that you just said homage because I, I, <laughs> I didn't look at it that way, but it's true. And I feel him with me all the time. Always. I actually think I have a closer relationship with him since he's passed Yes. than when he was alive. And it's because I've had, cra- oh, I just got another confirmation chill. I get crazy, I love it. I get crazy vivid dreams I've had with him. I had something else, like when I was actually meditating, I'm looking at my little area that I do it in at my home office. And I literally burned a little piece of paper because it was like my little prayer box. And I had little prayers written on them. And one of them was about my dad. And, you know, he's passed. So I'm kind of burning it like, oh, I don't need this anymore. And then literally all of a sudden it kind of blew up in my hand. I'm not lying. I can actually send you the picture after this. It's crazy. Almost blew up in my hand. I drop it. The candle that I drop it on top of half burns. And then I look 
and it keeps burning. And all that's left is this tiny little circle of a piece of paper with the words dad on it. It was insane. And it wow. was just, it's like experiences like that. You're probably getting confirmation chills. You know, <laughs> when you have experiences like that, you can't deny it. Right. And until I think you're open to the fact that we have our angels, our guides, our people surrounding us everywhere all the time. 24 seven, like a Wi-Fi signal. I said 24 seven, like a Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's part of why my pain wasn't like what others experience when they go through something similar. I have to share something with you, my insight. So when my grandfather passed in 04, he's like, your, he, he passed. And when he died, I had the spiritual experience of him visiting me. And I had that unconditional love wash over me. And that's why I've never cried. I've never, I've never had an outburst of negative emotions about my grandfather's death only once. And that was on my birthday in 2008, when I came back from Mississippi and I was in this place where I'm living right now, my condo in Tampa. And I, for the first time, I actually had a chance to think about my grandfather on my birthday. And I was like, you know what? I really wish I had a card from them. I wish I had the last card from them. I wish I, and I got into this, like, cause my grandmother had just passed a year earlier. So I realized I will never have a birthday card from them again. And I got into this really weird rabbit hole that happens sometimes. Yeah. Fell asleep on my birthday, had a dream. My grandfather came to me in a dream and said, son, I love you. I don't care what time it is. Happy birthday. When you get up, I don't care what time of night it is. Clean out your closet for me, son. <laughs> I woke up and it's you found a card in the closet, didn't you? You got it. You got it. So that's my <laughs> that's story. So cool. But that gives you the, the, the idea that, yes, our dreams actually have given me something physical manifested as a result of a visitation dream from my grandfather. And that was like the best birthday gift I've had in the last since 2004 from him. And it's exactly what you were asking for. How and it was exactly what I was asking for. And it was instantaneous with a dream that showed me that he's there 24 seven. The I, I, I truly believe when we think of them, it's because they're with us. Yes. Right. You have such a talent, Jason, that you, you do. And I like, I feel like I'm just like such a little infant next to you because no that's way. no way. My you're, you're advanced too. No, I can well, tell when people have their own spiritual advancement. And the fact is you've graduated, so to speak, by going through what you've gone through. And, and I feel like turning it into such opportunity, it's revolutionized your, it's revolutionized your life. It's okay. changed the way you look at things. And I think it's changed your relationship with everyone in your life for the positive. It absolutely has. I, I love life every day. I'm thanking God for the beautiful day. I just got to have, and you know, my prayers at night are always about gratitude, just thankful for everything that I have. And then everything has exploded as a result. And it's, it, there's no reason anybody should suffer, but we are a planet full of people walking around, bumping into each other, suffering. And, you know, nothing hurts more than hurt people. You're right about that. You're right hurt about people that. hurt people and they're just running around like especially all the ugly we've seen we've seen in the media this last year or two terrible things right and everybody's walking around like damaged in this world and there's no need for it jason I what a beautiful you. place would we be in if people could tap in every day chill out a little bit and then go about their day with a smile on their face even if they just spilled coffee on their favorite shirt <laughs> I want to ask you this because I know you'll be able to answer this for me. We all have spiritual experiences. Some of us recognize it more than others. We're more in tuned with it. Maybe you and I, I want to ask you in terms of your spiritual experiences, what was the most in terms of, in terms of your like first spiritual experiences, even before your father's death, what was like your first that you can remember a first spiritual experience and what was it like and how did it shape how you viewed the world around you? Well, so my very first one, I think I've been having experiences as a, even a little girl. Like yeah. I, I, I do believe that I've had them, but one that popped into my mind that I think is more valuable to share with you at this time is in 2012, my husband and I, so this is before I even really, like when I met my husband in 09, he used to watch the show Ghost Hunters. Yes. And he'd, he'd make me watch it going to sleep. And I would literally have nightmares. Like I'd wake up like all freaked out and like, I, I just couldn't even handle it. Right. And that was like such a, I was such a little child when it, when it came <laughs> to stuff like that. So he kind of got me like a little bit more interested, a little bit more open 2012. We go to Chicago of all places. It was my birthday weekend. 
I'm a Libra. So my birthday is coming up soon. I, I think our birthdays are really similar. Um, what, I'm what, October 2nd. What are you? 18. Okay. So we're just a couple of weeks apart. And so we're there for, and I wanted to go, there's like this ghost tour company on along, a, along a river and it used to be a sugar mill, but like apparently it has some mafia history and it's somewhat abandoned, somewhat not. There's some artists that are, have like different rooms in this place. And then there's this ghost hunting company and James and I go and check it out. They didn't have a tour the day we were there. So they, the guy offered to just give us our own private tour. Cool. So we go, we go and we're, we're with these dousing rods and the little EMF detectors, you know, and all the little voice boxes. Like he's got us with all the equipment and the guy was really cool. He was there trying to figure out who the ghosts were occupying this building. It was very active. And they said probably because of all the water and what have you. Law enforcement. So, yeah, that too. Who knows? I, I got I law know. enforcement energy. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, did you? Okay. So yeah. there, so yeah, maybe that's with the mafia and, and I don't know, but so I'm going there. And James and I are kind of doing our thing and we're asking our questions with the dousing rods and they're crossing. Yes. Opening up to hug us saying no, all these things. And then all of a sudden the guy goes, Oh, great. You brought your own ghost. This isn't somebody. Cause like he realized he was trying to find out the history of the place. So he, he kind of got annoyed and walked off and left me and James to just kind of do our own thing. And I'm asking questions. And I basically realized through the course of the conversation, it was my grandmother's real father and there's a whole story behind that. And that's when I felt my first, like literally a wave of love. And I just started bawling. And I'm not somebody who's very emotional. I don't cry a lot. I don't know why. But in that moment, I just started bawling. Like I couldn't even, oh, I'm crying so hard. And, you know, I'm just kidding. My husband's like, oh my gosh, no, she really doesn't cry like this. <laughs> it just felt so good. So I call my mom the next morning. I'm like, mom, you need to tell me the story. Who's this? Who's this person? She tells me the story wrong. So I call my dad. He comes rushing to my house when I got home from Chicago with photo albums. Get this, Jason. This is, this is, the, the, I add this, maybe this is going to be part of my book. I call it my Mexican telenovela because, you know, I'm half Mexican. So back in the olden days, my grandmother's real father had one testicle. And so he thought he couldn't have children. And when my great grandmother got pregnant, he assumed she cheated on him. <laughs> he left. My grandmother is born. My grandmother's stepfather turned out to be a real piece of work. And he tried to kill my grandmother with a gun. My great grandmother jumped in the way. It literally she ended up with a glass eye afterwards, but he thought he killed her. So then he shot himself before my grandma died. So I do feel like this is like a, a, a something maybe in my history with my family. My grandma was in a Mex is, was in a Mexican movie theater with my grandfather in Mexico city. And they just kept hearing Blanca, Blanca, Blanca. They get home. This is probably like in the forties, fifties. And he had called because he was on his deathbed. He was saying goodbye to her. And I truly believe he's with me all the time. And maybe it's his job now to watch out for Blanca's whole line of family. My grandmother and grandfather were Mormon. And I think their descendants between the two of them, I counted up to 140 of us when he passed, he was so cute. He had like this whole genealogy chart and everything, <laughs> but yeah, they had eight kids and all of their kids had a whole bunch of kids. But what was interesting is before she died or before he died, there is one picture of my grandma and her, and her dad. And I know that was the man with me in Chicago in that mill. And, and they looked identical. And apparently they saw each other once. And then he realized, you know, the error in his ways that she was my daughter and he had no life with her. So I think he's over on the other side, taking care of all of his descendants. And uh, I had no idea about any of that story until we went with the dousing rods in Chicago of all places. So crazy. What but, a story though. I mean, that's it, an amazing story. Right? Synchronicity? Like, I, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, that was the cool one from 2012, but yeah, there's always been little things that have happened since I was a little girl and I don't know if I repressed it or just wasn't ready for it yet. Or I had to have an experience with my first husband, which wasn't a great one. I got babies out of it, but it was a, not a great marriage. And it wasn't until he's out of my life. I think that I was open to the kind of life that I get to live today. I love that. You know what though? everything happens for a reason, right? And everything occurs because it builds on something else. And that's what I feel like. I actually believe 
you have more intuitive abilities than you even realize. I think that they're there, but I think it's one of those things until you explore them more, until you practice with them more, until you actually embrace it more, you'll, you'll understand it better. Like my brother, he, he sends me a text message the other day. My brother's five years older than me. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking about psychic stuff for the last 20 something years since I first had my, my grandfather's 2004, but before that, right. he goes, he, he still denies that he gets intuition. He's like, I was watching, I was in my kitchen and I had a premonition that the ceiling fan would catch on fire. And then he sends me a picture of the ceiling fan burnt up. And he's like, and the same day I had a premonition that the AC was going <laughs> to, was going to have a problem. I go like mine. He goes, Hey, I guess what? AC just went out. I said, what? you're psychic. He's like asking me, what does this mean? I'm like, <laughs> you, you got intuition. It, that's all it means. Well, so do you think it actually runs in families? Jason? Yes. Oh my gosh. My grandmother, my mom, me, yeah. my brother, I'm sure my uncle has it. I, I believe that heavily. My grandmother had it very strongly my entire childhood. And I talked to her about it openly. I was like, I get premonitions. I get de- I used to call deja vu. Why do I get things that I sense before they happen? And she said, don't talk to people about this. It was in the eighties. Don't talk about it. People right. will never understand it. I don't talk about it, but it's something that we have in our genetics. I believe I, in our DNA. DNA. Exactly. It's exactly. in our DNA. And, and maybe I, and I, and I, and it did resonate when you said that, and I don't know what the resistance is, but I'm, I'm figuring it out because I think it's so cool to know without knowing why, you know, I mean, I like the, I do. Get cognizance is a powerful thing when you're just aware of something and you just learn, like I, I've given thousands of readings since, you know, my grandfather passed uh, for the first 10 years, I did it in, informally. And then 2017, it's been a bunch since I, figured out the difference between me giving professional readings where I actually call myself a psychic medium and, and, you know, list myself out there and hold myself out like a, a shingle with real estate or being a lawyer. Right. And the difference between that and someone who's sitting by themselves saying, I don't know, I get these things. I just don't know what they are. And then mm-hmm. you practice with somebody. The difference is confidence. The difference is having the confidence in what you pick up and not doubting it, not letting your ego get in the way or doubt right. it. You just go with it. You flow with it. And if you can flow with it, then that's where you're going to be more intuitive. That's when it gets a lot stronger. And I think that is it. It's just the whole confidence. Cause I guess it's, it's really hard. And I think I asked you this question when you were on my show, I'm like, how do you be a psychic and not sound crazy when it comes to being a professional? Right. Because it just seems like so many people that we encounter are not open to this world. And I'm going to tell you, I have a hard time with people that aren't open with it anymore. I, because I'm so I'm in the deep end of it. You know I mean? I have people come on the show all the time, talk spiritual stuff. And my close friends are all spiritual that if I have people who are just totally devoid of it, mm-hmm. it's a hard, it's a hard conversation for me because I, if someone's so skeptical right. that they're like, I don't believe there's anything psychic in this world. I don't feel like there's anything spiritual or intuitive. I'm an atheist and I don't believe in anything, but unless you show it to me in front of my face, Right. It's, hard. it's a challenge, but it's hard. Sometimes I just don't have the desire to want to deal well, with the challenge of it, like in terms of trying to persuade somebody. So are these people that actually come to you for show, uh, for readings and then they just like shut it all down or just if anybody people, they encounter? I've had, well, I, that's a great question. If it's people who've come to me for readings, it's usually where I'll pick up stuff for them and they'll, they'll figure out that they can't be skeptical because there's no way I would pick up on the things that they that I share with them. And that usually helps. But I'm talking about people in general. Like I've had people challenge me when I'm like out and about, oh, you're psychic. I, I, I'm also a lawyer. You want to challenge me on that? <laughs> it's just one part of me. It's not the only right. part of me, but some people love to hang their hat on that and challenge. Well, what did I have for dinner last night? Uh, it's not like that. It, it's not how, what are the lottery numbers? No, that's not yeah. how it works. Well, and, and that's, those are definitely the people I agree that, you know, maybe there's a season for everything. Let them stay in their lane. Yeah. Let them stay in their lane. And then we're going to move on to the 5D reality that's, yes. that's happening right now. Right. It, it, which blows my mind, but it just seems like there's no other explanation for all the crazy stuff that's happened in the last few years. Right. Absolutely. I want to talk about your show though, because I had the pleasure of being on it. I love yes. that having you host me on your show, share with our audience a little about Grateful Heart TV and, and just, I know, I mean, we could say where it started from, which is turning grief into gratitude, but I wanted to see if you could share with our audience a little more about it and let them know. I mean, because it's such a great show. Well, and I'm open to show suggestions. And if there's anybody that wants to be on the show, I've been hit up a lot recently, which is really cool. You know, for me, because my business exploded, is so much after I started being more open spiritually, I, I realized and I deduced that, oh my gosh, you know, to be successful in life and in business, 
it's all connected. Oh yeah. Right. The, everything's connected and it's about healing. So that's in my show, I try my best to introduce healing modalities that maybe people haven't heard of. Um, maybe they haven't experienced or don't know, or maybe they're curious and they just don't even know the questions to ask. That's why when you came online, I asked you to give me a reading on camera live, I loved it. Yeah. you know, because I, I, I'm not afraid of it. I've had, you know, people come on and do meditations. I've had channelers on because there's so much information out there that can be used to benefit people's lives, not just business, not just real estate, but just a better everything, right? It's all connected. That's and true. so I'm trying to do my best to share different healing modalities because I do believe truly I got healed immediately after all those passings. And when I looked back and realized what had happened, my whole life changed. Like I talked about, I've flown a plane. I learned to surf. I bought my cabin. We have a beautiful office now. Like everything that we said we couldn't do before we were making excuses manifested. And my life is still manifesting some beautiful achievements that, you know, like Grateful Heart TV, I get to meet so many cool people. Isn't it? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Like two weeks ago, I interview a guy from Hawaii who's been in real estate for 48 years and he broke world records for windsurfing and all kinds of cool stuff. And he just wrote a book and I get inspired every day because the number one thing I will tell you, and this is why it's my song on my intro is we get what we give. We get what we give. It's that I love your simple. song on the show because it's a show that I have. It's a song that I have memories with and it has such meaning to it. I feel like when I was watching your opening for your show, because like obviously yeah, I'm doing like you did research right. on me. I researched you because I want to make sure I, I don't miss anything. Right. And I was watching your opening video for Grateful Heart TV and I, I, I posted, I actually posted your um your Manifest Destiny video on my social media today. Oh, did like, you really? I did it before the show. I'm like okay. such a touching such a touching, inspirational, I mean, six minutes I watched of that. I think it's a six minute clip and it's the most inspirational moment when I really, it's like peeling back the onion and seeing underneath your facade that you have, that you offer to the public as a realtor, as yeah. a spiritual person, as a host of a podcast. Right. And mm -hmm. this is like, it's on my social media now. It's on my Instagram. It's a story. It's like, you know, the way I look at it is by peeling back that onion and seeing the layer that is you underneath, mm -hmm. but you, you show it to the public. It, get, it all clicked for me. It all makes sense. I mean, being on your show, I got one side of you. You asked right. me questions. I talked about myself, <laughs> tear, tear, right? Right. But having you come on my show completes the picture. It's like, it's like we going from, circle. well, and, and, you know, I, I, look, I consider it like pixelation. I, I think it's like 4K compared to like TV from the 80s. Right. Like pixelated, funny years. The reason I say that is it, it really impressed upon me. Like having the ability to manage your grief and do it in a way where you're, I, I mean, on your video, you're jumping out of an airplane. I've never jumped out of an airplane. I was confiding <laughs> you. I, I mean, confiding. I'm, I'm announcing to the public right now that I am terrified of jumping out of airplanes. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those fears in my mind. I'm sure I'll do it someday because you got to do it. It's the best. I'm watching you do it. And I'm like, it was so okay. Fun. okay. Well, it, 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 and you know, <laughs> That was done but between husbands because neither of my husbands wanted to ever let me go and jump out of a plane. It was such a cool experience, Jason. I hope you do it. I hope you do. Please well, go. You want me to tell you something nerdy? As a lawyer and in insurance, I know that get your life insurance vested and then <laughs> Because any life insurance application asks you if you want to get life insurance, they'll ask you, have you ever done anything like jump out of a plane? And if you answer yes, you're not going to get covered. <laughs> you got to get invested, get invested. So anyone in the audience wants to jump out of a plane, make it on your bucket list, get that life insurance policy locked in. I think it's like a before you go, <laughs> before you do it, but it's going to be on my list. And I do have a vested life insurance policy. So yeah, I could do it if I wanted to. <laughs> Eloy, come to Arizona. You can go to the same place I went. Well, and I want to ask you about Arizona. It's one of my favorite states. I had a very profound spiritual experience in Sedona, Arizona. Oh, yes. And it changed. It made me invest in crystals. Let me do that right. It was rose quartz. It made me understand things from a, a vibrational frequency type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, uh, have you had any spiritual experiences yourself in Sedona or anywhere else? I mean, Arizona. Yeah, is actually... I was called to Mount Shasta recently. I have been to Sedona. I have had experiences in Sedona, but for whatever reason, maybe it's because my cabin's only a mile or an hour from there. It just, it, it doesn't have the same draw to me, but I've always 
wanted to go to Mount Shasta and literally, um, let me think what is just barely a month ago, I got to go with my cousin who was eight days older than me. We have total parallel lives. <laughs> and so we're sitting up on the mountain and we're meditating. And I had a vision of Christ come to me and it was huge. And the downloads I've received since then, and I came home so energized. So I think it was very similar to probably, no, I know for a fact it was similar because I'm getting that. So I'm going to stop doubting my abilities, Jason. I, I think and Sedona was, was my Mount Shasta for you. You know, you coming on the show today and us talking and me picking up energy off you and just feeling things. I can tell you right now, I really think you would enjoy a side hustle. I know you're busy, but a side hustle with you really pursuing your intuitive abilities. Cause I think you have that level of skill and I think you'll find, gra you'll find greater gratitude when you can understand your gifts better. And that the reason you have your gifts is to inspire others, work with others, help others, heal others. That's what I think my intuitive abilities are meant to do. Even with the show, anything we can offer is healing words to the audience yeah. that people can like understand and resonate with right now. And I really think you have that healing ability. That's why you're so good in real estate. That's why you're so good in all avenues of your life. And that's why you've taken what you have and turned it into opportunity. I get the word opportunity all, all around you. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. Do you know the definition of, of luck is when being prepared meets opportunity? I love that. And I don't think, you know, people have always told me that I'm lucky and I have the Midas touch. And I, I don't think it's so much that. You're a manifester. <laughs> I'm a manifester. And, you know, and I was, a, I was one of those unconscious manifestors, I think, most of my life. And then when I woke up, the volume just got cranked. Do you use dry erase boards regularly yourself for like visions, like vision board and that kind of thing? I should say not visions because I have a, a large dry erase board in my room that I brought home from my office. I call it my vision board now and everything I write on that board. Usually I'll leave it up for a few months. Everything somehow works itself out. Yeah, on that like, board. A, like a vision board. The closing of my show is the song vacation by dirty heads. And you'll see a beach because I love the ocean and the beach. And there's a ton of words. I'm going to, when we get off of this call, I'm going to send you the picture. Oh, I, had, I went into my office one day when nobody else was there in the morning before work opened and I just basically barfed all over my hugest whiteboard I have. And I have all these words everywhere. And they ended up on my show closing. So I'll share it with you because I, I, like, I do it all the time. And I have vision boards. I have two of them right here that I can see in my office. <laughs> you, are a, you, you are a manifester. And I think you're going to be a life coach in the future. And I think you're going to take your personal story and turn it into all the guests I have on my show, all these thought leaders, all these visionaries, all these people who have their own grand epiphanies that they... They can, mm -hmm. you know, envision things and create things and, and motivate. I mean, that's the general theme of all the people I've been interviewing over the summer. And the only difference between them and you is that they figured out what their message was. I think you're right. figuring out your message now. And I wouldn't be shocked right. if in the future you're going to have real estate and you're going to have a side gig, a side hustle, as we call it. And I like gonna, side hustles. I'm side hustles are fun, Monday. right? <laughs> I mean, you already have a side hustle. You have your show. It's fun though, right? It's our, it's our, it's our way to express ourselves in ways and connect with people. We never would on the other way, right? No. And it's so funny. A lot of times with the show, and I'm sure you're the same way, Jason, because we're both busy professionals and we're trying to, you know, have our, our fun doing this at the same time. I look at it almost like going to the gym where sometimes like the day before I'm like, oh crap, I really don't want to go. I've got so much going on. But then once I do it, I always leave so charged and energized because right? this is a total exchange and it feels so good. It if is we would just stop true. doing things that don't feel good and just focus on the good, you know, let them be heaven on earth. I'll tell you this. During the pandemic last year, I, I go for a walk every night to get through because here in Tampa, while things aren't locked down, I mean, it's like the Wild West here in the sense yeah. that COVID is rampant. It's always been bad. And it fluctuates. So I go for this walk and I walk along the water here in Tampa, I have my little nature walk, so to speak, within the city along the water. And I kept getting like downloads, like you need to do more podcasting. You need to do more podcasting. Back then, a year ago, I was only doing one or two episodes a month. I was going through a depression because of this pandemic. And it was hard for me to focus. I had two friends, parents passed from COVID because they lived in New York early in the pandemic. So it was hard. And right. finally, this year is when I finally took the follow the lead of what my premonitions were or my spirit guides telling me do more podcasting, do more podcasting. I understand why. Cause I'm like locked down and I'm in the house a lot. And I, it, it's like the perfect vehicle to occupy your mind and spirit and in a positive way. 
and do something within your creative abilities. Mm-hmm. So it kind of touches on everything for me, podcasting. And I want to ask you, for you with Grateful Heart TV, has it been something that you found it, it, it's this amazing bright light in the midst of what we've gone through in society for the last few years? Have you felt that your show gives you the outlet to keep, just really raise your elevation and boost your mood and give Absolutely. you the- <laughs> I, well, I get to talk to cool people like you. <laughs> Same here. Same right? here. And, and then I'm learning from others. I mean, exactly. it always feels good to learn, right? We're bettering ourselves. When we're, and, you know, so the gentleman I just mentioned that I interviewed from Hawaii, he said something which was so cool in our interview. And he was saying his dad taught him how to come from a place of curiosity instead of judgment. Let that sink in. Coming from a place of curiosity instead of judgment. And that was a lesson that he learned very young at the dinner table with his family. And he carried it throughout his career, throughout his achievements, throughout everything. And if we could just walk through life instead of being prejudiced or judging others, you know, you look at something and instead of, you know, automatically assuming you know what they're about, ask them some questions. Love that. And and open your mind to be curious and learn. I mean, how beautiful is that? It's like a, it's like a beautiful flower, like in the desert, right? A desert road. I love that. I love that yeah. idea to have the curiosity because by having curiosity, you engage the other person and you learn about them and you're going to be less judgmental in the end. Well, the walls all come down because as soon as you're curious about learning about something, then, then you want to hear more and you're open. But when you're judgmental, you're not open at all. You're just basically shooting bad energy, bad juju at whatever you're judging, right? And you know how you can- time other people. How you could test that is if you go in a crowded place like a mall mm-hmm. and you walk around and you can see people judging other people just when they get cut off or in their line. I was at the bank today and this other woman was online in front of me and it was only me and her and two tellers. And the one teller went to use the bathroom. So technically everything was shut down while she was in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I was just waiting calmly. You got to you have a smartphone. You can entertain yourself anywhere, sure. no matter what. There's no reason to complain that you have to take too long for something. Right. And this person goes. And you know that body language of negativity? <laughs> yes. She kept repeating it. And it's only her eye and this third person behind the desk that can't go to the counter. Uh-huh. And I just smiled at her. And I did the smile. And she changed her attitude when we smiled at each other because she had her smile back at me. She uh-huh. wasn't like, <sighs> she went to smile. And then from that moment on, the rest of the time she was at the bank, she didn't complain at all. The lady came back in the restroom. We did the uh-huh. transaction. She got out and she smiled. And that was it. And I thought to myself, how nice it is when you could smile when someone's complaining because it changes the tone of the vibration of that person. Completely. You know, that saying, and I think I said this in my speech too, you know, Hey baby, what's your vibe? I never really understood what that meant until I started getting into spirituality. I'm like, they're talking about vibration. They're talking about frequency and it, it is, you can feel it. Well, maybe not everybody can, but I do think everybody probably could. For sure. They try. You, you, the minute you walk into a room, you can feel the frequency of the room or the people that are in it. And, you know, it's so easy. Like you just did at the bank. I <laughs> frequently find myself smiling and making a small <laughs> talk and just because I'm a happy person and it's yeah. contagious. Whatever we are, whatever frequency we, we emit, it's contagious. You and I are feeding off each other's positivity right now, right? I can yeah, feel we it. totally are. <laughs> and our yeah, audience is like, what are they talking smiles about? Are like over out of this te- out of this minute. Honestly, I have to admit, one of my closer girlfriends that we were very spiritually in tune together, we were both like messaging each other, like, oh, what's going on today? And I'm like, I don't know. I just got to get away from people. And and just and I actually came home and meditated and listened to some binaural beaded meditation. And I still wasn't quite there, but you got me there, Jason. I'm feeling amazing awesome. right now. Thank you. You got me there. You got me there. Cause I, I can't believe it's September 1st today. Right. And I'm like, right. wow, it's September 1st. Like the only thing I always associate, I'm a world war II bus. So I'm like, oh, this is the day that world war II started September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland. I'm a nerd <laughs> like that. And, but no, September 1st is a new beginning in every way possible. When you think yeah. about it, it's the fall coming up. Mm-hmm. It's us getting through this you know, rough year and a half that we've been going through. Every time we make it to another month, I feel like it's an accomplishment. It's like, oh, I've made it through another month. I've made it through the mundane aspects of whatever it is our lives have become because of certain things. But I've learned to appreciate things from a much grander scale. Hello. And that's what I think having you on today is an example of appreciating things from a much grander scale. That might oh. even be a future name of your book. Who knows? 
I might be. I'll have to come back and watch this show again and, and make sure. So there was a couple of things, little nuggets you said in there. I really liked. I just, I see a book. I see a book tour. I see you you coming on the show to talk about your book and we'll have a more pronounced exploration yes. of your journey. And I think that's just great. So I just got major confirmation chills when you're saying that, just so you know, like chills all over the left side of my body, which is so cool. So I, I think you're right. I think, I think we should just end it on this beautiful note. I'm wearing a purple dress, feeling the, feeling the love today, holding my Lemurian crystals in my hand. It's, I want to, I want to ask you this, uh, how does our audience get in touch with you directly? I want to make sure we, we've gone so fast through this conversation because it's just such connection. Yeah. I want to make sure you have a chance to share with our audience, how they can reach you and how to, you know, tune into grateful T grateful heart TV and all those stuff. So our website's simple, gratefulheart.tv. It doesn't get any easier than that. I'm on every really? podcast platform imaginable. And every time I learn of a new one, we get on that one too. And if you're looking for real estate services in Arizona, then just look me up at integrityallstars.com. But there is actually a link from the Grateful Heart TV. I have both sites linked together. I'm going to put all that into show notes too. So my audience okay. will have more access to that. That's so what? cool. Well, oh, I can't wait till we talk again because this is way Absolutely. too much fun. I just want to thank Rebecca for coming on the show today and sharing her personal story, having the ability to be vulnerable to large audiences, to share your personal story, to show that you can go through grief. There's so many people in our, in our lives that have experienced grief. There's been so much pain since March of 2020 with the pandemic and social justice issues and everything else we've gone through that I wanted to have Rebecca on the show because it's one thing to talk about going through grief and experiencing death of loved ones and close people in your life exiting unexpectedly, but it's another to do something about it and turn it into a positive. And that's what I think I would love to have as a takeaway from today's episode to have you think about. If you're presented with a really negative situation, try to find the gratitude, no matter how hard it, it is. There, it may be a really difficult situation. You may really feel like you're trapped, but the reality is if you can find the gratitude in your life, when you're presented with something really disappointing, really unsettling, or, or just really depressing and anxious, anxiety ridden, think of the positives. Think of the silver lining. There is a lot involved in that process that you will learn from. You'll benefit from it. And you can turn your life around the way Rebecca has. Mm. Not only has she turned her life around, but she's motivating and inspiring others through her digital content that she creates with Grateful Heart TV. And she lives by example. I'm going to tell my audience, you will see a lot about Rebecca in the future. I'm so excited to know her and be introduced to her through podmatch.com. And I just want my audience to, to definitely check out Grateful Heart TV. And I'll have that information in the show notes. And take the inspiration from today. Think to yourself, if I'm grieving, what can I do to help my situation? empower yourself. You do that. And I can guarantee you that you'll see the world from a different lens. You'll have a different paradigm. And in time, you'll grow. And not only will you grow, but the magnetization that you create in your life in the positive direction is going to influence many others. Try it. I believe you will be satisfied. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Stay positive because when you're positive, anything's possible. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Social Psychic Radio Show. Don't forget to join us for another episode next time. If you enjoyed the show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review on iTunes. You can also check us out on Facebook, and don't forget to visit the Social Psychic YouTube channel. Until next time, it's a big world out there. Keep an open mind embrace your paradigms, and know that the universe is always yours to explore.